Hey guys, today I want to talk about the Grand Spectrum Jewels that will be released in the patch 2.3. As some of you might have missed the announcement, let's first have a look, quick look at the jewels. The Grand Spectrum Jewels come in three different base types. The Viridian Jewel grants 5% elemental damage, the Crimson one grants 75 flat armor and the Cobalt one grants 15 maximum mana. What is special about these new jewels is that their bonus is multiplied by the total amount of Grand Spectrum Jewels you use. You don't have to be a professor to realize that they offer very powerful exponential bonuses and that stacking as many as possible is probably a good idea. But let's have a look at how exponential bonuses work. If you use just one Grand Spectrum Jewel, you only get its bonus once. If you use the second one, however, you will get in 4 times the bonus. Using 3 will grant you 9 times the bonus and so on. The maximum number of jewels you can currently get in the game is 21. With 21 Grand Spectrum Jewels, you would gain 441 times the bonus of a single jewel. That sounds quite sweet, but let's see what investment in skill tree that would take. Well, it's possible to get 20 or even 21 jewels, but you're basically spending every passive point that you get in the game. Passing from one jewel socket to another takes around 6 passive nodes on average. Going for this amount of jewels will prevent you from taking most of the build essential keystone nodes and limit your effective HP a lot. Getting around 15 jewels still requires a heavy investment, even on a high level character, but you will have some remaining points to get build essential keystones and make up for a lack of effective HP or damage, depending on which of the jewels you are using. The investment for 10 jewels is actually quite moderate. You will have enough remaining passive points to grab high priority defense and offense nodes. Grabbing just 5 sockets takes little to no additional investment. It's a pretty common amount of jewel sockets even for a non Grand Spectrum build. So let's have a closer look at the jewels. I'll start with the Viridian version, because the 5% elemental damage makes it easy to compare to rare jewels. A rare jewel with 3 damage mods will usually grant 35 to 45 increased damage, depending on its mods. A rare format jewel can range roughly from 45 to 60% increased damage. In order to be on par with three more jewels, you need at least 7 to 9 Grand Spectrum jewels and 9 to 12 to match four more jewels. Let's compare the different stages of investment for this jewel. Using just five of these doesn't make much sense, as even cheap rare jewels offer better stats. When you use 10 of these, the bonus you get is roughly on the power level of four more damage jewels. At 15 jewels, you'll be getting 75 damage per jewel, which is more than any rare jewel can offer. Getting this many jewel sockets will only be possible on a high level character and leave you with very few remaining passive points. For many builds, the remaining passive points will not be enough to get a viable amount of effective HP and pick up build essential keynotes. Needless to say, going for 20 jewels or more doesn't seem to be viable. So what's my wedding on jewel? I'd say it's a bit overhyped at the moment. The jewel has several problems. Using less than 10 makes little sense because of how powerful rare jewels are. Using more than 15 also makes little sense because it will screw up your defenses. But even in the sweet spot of 10 to 15 jewels, there's something you have to keep in mind. Your effective DPS is damage multiplied by attacks or casts per second, multiplied by more damage multipliers and factoring in crit, penetration and curses. Using rare jewels and passive nodes instead of grand spectrums allows for a much better balance of offensive stats and in the end DPS for most builds. No matter if you're getting 20 Grand Spectrums or just one, you should always ask yourself if you need that much damage at all. Will it increase your clear speed in maps or are you already one-shotting blue packs and rares and melting bosses in seconds? So where does this jewel shine? There are some builds that only have limited ways of scaling and can hardly get 3 or 4 more damage jewels. Righteous Fire for example can't be scaled through spell damage, cast speed or crit. Damage of herald effects in explosive arrows secondary explosion is considered neither attack nor spell, which also limits its scaling options. One case where the jewel could be really overpowered is detonate dead and other monster explosion effects. In general, double dipping ignite damage and adding prep or mine more multipliers to the mix doesn't sound like a bad idea with the high amount of increased damage you get. The crimson version of the jewel grants 75 flat armor. Unlike the viridian version, you can't really compare to the rare jewels, as they can't roll flat armor. So let's just see how much total armor you can get with these at different stages of investment. With 5 jewels used, you get a total of 1875 armor, which equals a decently rolled armor-based shield or chest piece. At 10 jewels, you get a total of 7500 armor, which is around the same level as a full set of high-rolled armor gear. 
Using 15 or even 20 of these jewels will give an insane permanent bonus of almost 17k and 30k flat armor. My recommendation would be to use 5 to 10 jewels. Below that it's barely worth to get it. I also wouldn't recommend going for more than 10 jewels. Armor only mitigates physical hits, so you will still need some remaining passive points to get effective HP and of course damage. Also, you will want to get some increased armor percentage nodes in a tree to optimize your final armor value. My verdict on this jewel is that it's already pretty nice at lower levels of investment. It is especially good for builds that cannot get a lot of armor and gear. Hybrid evasion and armor builds or energy shield and armor builds can use these jewels to focus more on evasion and energy shield on their gear. But keep in mind that armor isn't everything. Stacking too many of these does not replace a well-rounded defense. A bummer for hybrid evasion and armor builds will also be the less armor multiplier of acrobatics. Last but not least we have the Cobalt version of the Grand Spectrum Jewel series that grants 15 maximum mana. While it grants a lot of flat mana bonus, most people will still look at the jewel and think, why would I want to stack mana? The old arctic armor is gone and so are auras reserving flat amounts of mana. Well yeah, stacking mana has very little benefits for most builds. It could see some use for mines over meta builds, so stacking enough mana hasn't been too much of a problem for these kind of builds yet. But there's one class that can really make great use out of it, and I'll get to that in the next section. So let's discuss possible builds with those jewels. When I saw the Viridian and Crimson versions of the jewel, my thought was that this could be quite interesting for an Aegis Aurora build. With 5 jewels each, you get a total of 250% elemental damage and 3750 flat armor. That way you can focus on getting more energy shield on your gear and use the remaining passive points and ascendancy points to invest into block. Pick an elemental spell or attack and focus on more multipliers and a bit of added elemental damage to attacks or spells if you can. It should be possible to make a good endgame viable build around this. Nothing new however, so let's see where the Grand Spectrum jewels really get crazy. The jewel I'm talking about is the mana one. There's one class that can make such great use out of it that it becomes a build enabler. And that's the Guardian. The Guardian features an ascendancy node called Radiant Fate. Radiant Fate grants you and your nearby party members 15% of your reserved mana as maximum energy shield. Unlike the Herophant ascendancy, this node grants base energy shield. All energy shield increases from passive nodes, intelligence and gear do apply to this value. 15 of the mana jewels grant you a bonus of 3375 base mana, which is added to the mana gained by leveling and flat mana gained from intelligence and passive nodes as well as gear. With a small investment, percentage based mana increases in the tree, a pledge of hands and one dream fragment thing, a high level guardian can reach upwards of 15k mana. Reserving this huge amount of mana will grant you and your party more than 2500 base maximum energy shield. This is roughly equal to wearing a full set of GG energy shield gear. Remember that for you and each party member this bonus is then multiplied by increased energy shield percentage nodes in the tree and percentage bonuses from intelligence and gear like the ring enchantment or the amulet mod. With around 200% increased energy shield from a combination of passive nodes, intelligence and gear, this guardian will gain more than 7500 total energy shield just from Radiant Fate. Parties will love you for the insane amount of defense you offer them, but even when not in parties, the Bledge of Hands allows for a 7 damage setup in addition to the cross on hit setup that many supports use in their chest. You can also swap some of the mana grand spectrum jewels for elemental damage ones for solo play and you should deal sufficient damage to do high level maps on your own. I will probably give this build idea a try in the upcoming 2.3 update and post a detailed build guide video as soon as I can. What's all, I'm currently finishing the last bits on my Wind Ripper Siege Ballista Hero Fan build guide, so stay tuned for future content.